My name is Malik Abdul Malik. I am one of the dedicated account managers here at Mango. Um, today, I'm going to be joined by my colleagues, Cruz Pardo and Sabrina Richardson, to highlight and explore the history and culture of several Latin American countries who also identify with Hispanic culture. Um, we will be exploring some of these traditions and other aspects of how your library can support these patrons in your community, not only for a month, but all year long. So first, my colleague Sabrina is going to give us some background about that large community that does identify with Hispanic culture and what Hispanic Heritage Month is and how it even came about. So over to you, Sabrina. Wonderful. Thank you, Malika. So yeah, we are going to see some fantastic examples of ways that you can celebrate and promote Hispanic Heritage Month at the library. But before we jump into that, what is Hispanic Heritage Month? So it is a national celebration that honors the history, culture, and influence of past generations who came from places like Spain, Mexico, the Caribbean, as well as Central and South America. So there are actually more than 20 different Spanish-speaking countries and territories that are honored during the four weeks that make up Hispanic Heritage Month. So it spans from September 15th through October 15th, and it initially started in 1968 as a week-long celebration, but then was extended to a full month 20 years later. Um, it is celebrated during this time because September 15th marks the Independence Day of Costa Rica, Nicaragua, El Salvador, Honduras, and Guatemala. Um, a few other Hispanic countries who celebrate their Independence Day within this time frame include Mexico, which celebrates their Independence Day on September 16th, um, Chile on September 18th, and Belize on September 21st. So what does Hispanic mean? So it's very common for people to use Latino or Latina and Hispanic interchangeably. Um, but these words are actually different. They both refer to different things. So a Hispanic person is someone who comes from or is a descendant of a Spanish speaking country, while Latino is specifically referred to someone who either comes from or is a descendant of somewhere in Latin America. So a person can be both Hispanic and Latino, but not all Latinos are Hispanic and not all Hispanics are Latino. So a good example of this is Brazil. While Brazil is a Latin country, so Brazilians are considered Latino, um, they're not Hispanics because the national language of Brazil is Portuguese. Um, on the other side, Spain is another example of a place that is Hispanic, but is not Latino because Spain, while they do speak Spanish, it is in Europe. So here you can see a few examples of countries that are considered Hispanic, as well as countries that are considered Latin. Um, and you can see that some of them do fall in the same category. They go into both, while there are others that don't. Cruz and Malika are going to give some really great examples of ways that you can celebrate this. They're gonna go into more depth, but just to throw out a couple ways in which that you can celebrate Hispanic Heritage Month at the library or in your community um, is to celebrate and honor the different cultures. So you could enjoy a traditional Hispanic dish. You can read about different types of traditional celebrations across different Hispanic countries, things like music, dance, traditional clothing, things like that. Um, you can also dive a little bit deeper into the history of the different countries. So you can learn and read about the histories, cultures, and contributions of different Hispanic communities, or you could visit a museum that highlights Hispanic culture. A couple things that you can do at home or in your community is you can donate to an organization that supports Hispanic communities or different countries. Um, you can enjoy Spanish music, watch a movie or a TV show that's in Spanish, or either read a book that is written by a Hispanic author or something that highlights different Hispanic countries' cultures. Um, you can support Hispanic-owned businesses that are within your community, or you can use something like Mango to learn Spanish. So now I am going to pass the mic over to Cruz so she can tell us a little bit more um, about some specific ways in which you can celebrate different Hispanic countries, uh, heritage histories and things like that in your community. 
Thank you so much, Sabrina, for sharing with us, you know, some of those important facts about Hispanic Heritage Month. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Cruz, and today I'm going to uh, be sharing with you a few different ways we can partake and celebrate during Hispanic Heritage Month. And what better way to start than by talking about food? So enjoying traditional dishes is not only a delicious way to celebrate Hispanic Heritage Month, but it's also a great way to support your local businesses and restaurants, just like Sabrina mentioned earlier. These uh, dishes are just some of the few traditional dishes that you might find at your local restaurants or grocery stores. So uh, for example, in Colombia and in Venezuela, uh, arepas are very popular. And arepas are a cornmeal um, cakes filled with cheese, uh, refried beans, meats, and uh, vegetables. And arepas are an iconic food in Colombia with more than 75 different forms of uh, preparation. And they are considered to be part of the Colombian cultural heritage. And in Venezuela, arepas are also a symbol of Venezuelan gastronomy and one of the most common pre-Hispanic foods. Also throughout Latin America, you can find similar variations of this dish. So for example, in Mexico, they have something very similar and they call them gorditas. And in Salvador, they call them popusas. In Ecuador, they call them tortilla de maíz. And in Panama, they call them tortilla or uh, changa. As you can see, you know, this dish is a very popular dish throughout Latin America. And although there are many different variations, um, they are all delicious. So, you know, you should give them all a try. Uh, and in Cuba, we have ropa vieja. So ropa vieja is a shredded beef dish made with simple ingredients like onions, garlic, um, tomatoes, red and green peppers, and they have spices like, um, like cumin and paprika. And it's uh, typically served with rice, black beans, and fried uh, plantains. Um, and there are a few variations. We do have a few variations of this dish all throughout uh, the Caribbean, um, especially in Dominican Republic and in Puerto, uh, Puerto Rico. Uh, ropa vieja literally translates to all clothes uh, because according to people from the Caribbean, this dish looks like a bunch of rags thrown together, but I guarantee you it, it's amazing. It tastes amazing. So you should give it a try. And in Mexico, we have pan dulce. So pan dulce or sweet bread is a general name for a variety of different Mexican pastries. As pan dulce is a very inexpensive treat and is typically consumed during breakfast or after dinner as a dessert. So one of uh, the more popular types of pan dulce are the conchas, which is the one that we have here in the picture. And the word concha translates to uh, seashell which describes their shape and the sugar um, seashell pattern that they have on top. So the bread is uh, lightly sweet, uh, fluffy and airy, and the topping is perfectly crunchy and sweet. And um, they also go great with coffee or Mexican hot chocolate. So, uh, you know, this is the reason why they're so popular, especially during breakfast. So one of my favorite ways to eat these is by just dipping the bread in, hot or, uh, in coffee or hot chocolate in the mornings. And it's just so delicious. And in Peru, we have ceviche. So ceviche is, a tip, uh, is typically made from fresh raw fish uh, that is cured in fresh um, citrus juices, which is a mixture of lime or lemon, and then it has chili peppers, red onion, salt, cilantro, and uh, uh, fish stock. So uh, the citrus juice is called leche de tigre, which literally translates to tiger's milk. Uh, leche de tigre is a critical part of the Peruvian ceviche, and in a few parts of Central and South America, leche de tigre is also often sipped as a hangover cure. Uh, the name ceviche originates from the uh, Quechuan word, uh, ceviche, which means fresh or tender fish, and ceviche is often eaten as an appetizer. And in Peru, ceviche has been declared uh, to be part of the country's national heritage, and um, they even have a holiday declared on its, uh, in its honor. And in Argentina, we have, in Argentina and Chile, we have the empanadas. So an empanada is a type of baked or fried pastry, and it's filled with meat, cheese, corn, or other ingredients. Uh, so in Argentina, empanadas are uh, often served during parties or festivals um, as a, either a starter or a main course. And um, empanadas is just so popular in, Ar in Argentina that 
they have been declared, uh, they declared the empanadas a cultural heritage of food and gastronomy by the Argentine Ministry of Culture. And in Chile, empanadas are a staple part of the, Chi of the Chilean cuisine. Um, they are traditionally consumed in large quantities during the country's National Day celebrations, uh, since Chileans consider uh, empanadas to be their most uh, representative dish of, of their country. And traditional family games are also a great way to foster educational activities, and it's a fun way to celebrate Hispanic, uh, Hispanic Heritage Month as a family. So uh, domino, el domino or dominoes, is a quintessential game played throughout the Caribbean. Uh, so for Puerto Ricans, dominoes is an activity in which community relations are just built together and they're sustained. And dominoes are played in all circles in Puerto Rican society by people of all ages. So, um, you know, it's primarily known as a family game since it's learned by children from their fathers, their uncles and their grandfathers. And in Cuba, the game of dominoes is their national game. So for many Cubans, the game is a daily social event that combines competition with camaraderie and you can frequently see you frequently see people just playing a game of dominoes in uh in their parks or in other public spaces loteria lottery uh it's another version of bingo uh, but it's using images um, on a deck of cards with colorful illustrated images instead of the number of ping pong balls that you normally use uh, when you play uh, bingo so in mexico this is a very popular game it's Tradition to use small rocks, coins, or pinto beans as markers to keep track of the cards. Um, I have been playing this game, you know, since I was a little girl, and I have many wonderful memories playing Loteria with my grandparents and my cousins and my aunts and my uncles. So this is truly a fun and easy game, you know, for everyone. Loteria is such a popular game among Mexicans that the Loteria cards have become an iconic symbol in the Mexican culture. And in the Latino culture, dance and music brings friends and family together. So what better way to honor Hispanic Heritage Month than by celebrating with music and dance? So you can start by inviting either a local dancer to the library and maybe hosting a dance class for your community. There, there's so many different types of uh, traditional dances all over uh, Latin America. Uh, and some of them obviously you know, are easier to learn than others. So some of these traditional dances that you might see are things like the flocorico, um, cumbia, salsa, merengue, uh, rumba, bachata, samba, tango. And these are just, you know, a few that I'm naming. There's a lot more other dances that you can learn. Um, but if dancing is not really your thing, you can uh, make a display of popular Latino artists or play some Latino music during her uh, Hispanic Heritage Month. Uh, some of the popular artists uh, include uh, people like uh, Ricky Martin, Selena, Enrique Iglesias, Shakira, Gloria Estefan, Celia Cruz, Mark Anthony, um, and Vicente Fernandez. And these are all iconic people that, you know, everyone in the uh, Latino community, uh, they're really well known. So as you already know, during Hispanic Heritage Month, we also recognize the impactful uh, ways Latinos have contributed to the U.S. history. So this is a perfect time to, you know, also highlight and share the stories of Latinos that have contributed to the history of, uh, of the U.S. So, for example, uh, we have Cesar Chavez, who was a first generation Mexican-American from Arizona, and he became an um, iconic activist, uh, you know, uh, fighting for the rights of farm workers and establishing the National Farm Workers um, Association. And then we have Elena, uh, Elena Ochoa, who was born in Los Angeles, uh, and she was the first Hispanic woman to go to the space. Uh, Sonia Sotomayor, um, born in the Bronx, she became the first Hispanic Supreme Court Justice of the United States. Uh, and Lynn Manuel uh, Miranda, a Puerto Rican American composer, actor, writer, and an activist, and he's most um, famous for having written the Broadway musical Hamilton. And these are just some of the books that I found that you know talk about their stories. And obviously, books are a great way to explore and learn more about different cultures. So you can create that uh, just so you can celebrate the Hispanic Heritage Month by having a display of popular Latino authors. Uh, and these are just a few of the popular authors in their books that you might already have the library. So uh, 100 Years of Solitude by Graviel Garcia Marquez, 
Uh, I'm now your perfect uh, Mexican daughter. Uh, and the Mexican ca- uh, Gothic is are just some of the newer popular books um, that a lot of people are reading right now. Um, the House on Mango Street is one of my favorite ones. Uh, it talks about the story of uh, a young Latina girl growing up in the U.S. and, you know, the struggles that she had. Daughter of Fortune by Is- uh, Isabel Allende and Like Water for Chocolate, just some of the classics that you might, again, you might already have these books at the library. And of course, let's not forget about children's books. So, you know, this is a, a great way to introduce new culture to kids, to explore, uh, is so they can explore it. So um, these are some of the popular children's books that you can display. Again, you might already have these books at the library. Um, Mango, Abuela and Me is a great book. Uh, Carmela, Full of Wishes. Alma, um, Island Born, Lucia, The Luchadora. These are amazing kids, kids books and um, that you can display, you know, so the little kids can learn more about the Hispanic Heritage Month. And last but not least, uh, movies. This is an easy, you know, way to celebrate Hispanic Heritage Month. You can either just, you know, display these movies at your library or you can host a family movie night. Um, this is also a great way to support Lat- Latino directors like Alfonso uh, Cuaron and Guillermo del-, del Toro, who direct great movies like Roma and uh, Pan's Labyrinth. You might be familiar with those movies. Um, other great movies that you might also already have at your library are movies like Selena, uh, Encanto, uh, The Book of Life, and of course, Coco. So now that I talked a little bit about, you know, just a few few different ways that you can celebrate uh, Hispanic Heritage Month, uh, Malika is now going to go over um, some of the resources that we have available to help you promote Hispanic Heritage Month and Mango at your library. Awesome. Thank you, Cruz. You shared so many um, beautiful traditions and just aspects of Hispanic and Latino culture. Um, not only that I feel like we could explore in our own, you know, individual lives, but also clearly through our local libraries as well. Um, so as Cruz mentioned, I do want to share some of the resources that Mango has to help you guys in terms of Hispanic Heritage Month, but also all year long um, with your native Spanish speaking patrons. And this is going to come in the form of content um, that we have to share with you, physical video, some printer posters. Um, But additionally, I also wanted to mention that we have bilingual customer service support here at Mango. Um, It is something that we strive to maintain with having, you know, one person at least on the crew um, to be able to help with native Spanish speakers who are using the product and are in need of assistance. I want to mention this because if you live in a community where you do have Spanish speakers who aren't maybe well versed in English, but you don't have somebody on staff that is conversational in Spanish, Going to mangolanguages.com and having them reach out to our support staff is a great is a great tool um, and something that you can definitely you know kind of guide them to and they'll be able to get the help that they need with whatever that is going on with the resource, um, even if it's just a logging in issue. All right, so first though, I want to highlight some of the specialty courses that we have to offer in the Spanish Latin American course. Um, but I of course want to highlight and spend more time uh, mentioning our Spanish for librarians. Um, as it's one of our favorites, and of course, it's who we're currently talking to and our number one Mango customer. Um, I did want to share that I have had some really meaningful and special conversations with people this year at conferences about how much they love this course, um, from how it's helped them, help their staff, build their confidence in talking with patrons in the community. Um, I had a conversation with somebody at PLA who worked at a library that had Mango, moved to a library that did not, and specifically brought on Mango because of this unique specialty course that we offer. They were in a community that was heavily Spanish uh, speaking based and they didn't have a lot of staff members who were bilingual. So um, I can't tell you how great it is to hear those stories from somebody and how impactful you know, this course has been for librarians. Um, some of the things that you know are going to be focused in on that chapter are just very normal things to happen in the library, whether that's on a daily basis or a weekly basis, you know, depending on your community. Um, but you're going to focus on things like obtaining a library card, how to help them with accessing resources. They might ask about what kind of activities or events are happening at the library, um, help with job searching, or just general help at the reference desk overall. Um, but Not to just spend all the time speaking about that, I wanna mention the other ones that we offer as well. Um, So we offer a business unit, 
a tax talk, a medical course, romance, and also a legal unit. Um, I love the text course. I think that is great for like teen programming. That is obviously the way everybody's communicating these days. Um, but I think that could be really geared towards like your young teens and young adults. The romance is great, of course, to utilize during the month of February with Valentine's Day, um, but also possibly throughout other parts of the year because there are several Latin American countries that celebrate love romantically and friendship wise um, at different parts of the year that are not just February. So I would encourage you to go ahead and take a look at some of those um, specialty units, uh, especially if you've you know used the Spanish for librarians, take a look at some of the other ones that we have to offer. Another resource that we have um, for you guys is our YouTube channel. So you might not be aware that we actually have several Spanish based tutorials on our YouTube page. Um, and for those of you who do not know how to access it, once we're done here, we will be dropping a link for you to save it for easy reference. Um, that way you can just go ahead and take a little peek and get more familiar with it after the webinar today. Um, there are a few different videos on there, but some of the things that they go over are things like how to sign up for Mango, how to navigate the platform, um, to down to explaining some elements of our methodology and why Mango works for language learners overall. Um, as I mentioned, we are going to drop the link a little bit later for you guys to navigate that, but I do think this is a great tool for you guys to have, whether it's for your staff or your patrons. Um, I think it could be utilized in a couple of different ways. Just as an example, um, if somebody on staff is speaking with someone who's Spanish, um, their native language is Spanish, and maybe they can get like a little bit of English out, but you can't really fully understand them to get to the end, which is the help that they're needing. Um, coming to the YouTube channel, getting them to the computer lab, setting them down and just giving them the first like how to sign up for Mango video would be a great step. And then from there, Mango pretty much does the work um, and you can queue them up with multiple videos. So there's, you know, a sign up video. There's a tutorial navigating. There's a video on how to add family profiles. Um, so if you are familiar with the YouTube channel and how to access these videos, it'll be a lot easier if someone comes into the library and you can kind of see like, oh man, like if I just show them this video, they'll probably be all set and understand how to sign up. Um, so I will encourage you guys to, you know, explore the YouTube channel a little bit um, later, if not today, you know, this week. All right, so now I wanna talk about some physical uh, tangible things that we have for you guys to support. Like we mentioned, not only through Hispanic Heritage Month, but throughout the year. Um, we have some of the general posters and flyers up on the screen here that you can find in the Mango Market. These are available for print or download use. Um, there's just some of the general posters that we have up here on the screen um, that are all in Spanish. One is the family profiles. We're highlighting the mobile app. And then there's two kind of general uh, Mango posters. One's like a welcome to Mango and kind of walks you through creating, you know, a login, password and how to get started. And the other one's kind of just a general information poster. Um, these are wonderful. You guys can share these on your social media. They could be printed out inside of the library. Um, posted around the community even in places that you know uh, the population is heavy Spanish speaking and might be in need of seeing these posters or figuring out how to sign up for Mango, whether that's for EL needs um, or just other language learning needs in general. Speaking of the Mango market, I want to mention this again, it's our webinar reminder that we do have the Mango market for you guys to use. It is here to help with marketing and promotion of the resource. Um, we have some of the items up on the screen here that you can get from the market with your Mango annual swag budget. Um, if you're not sure what that is, please wait for the last slide um, and you will find out if your account manager is based on your territory and where you live. They'll have our email and our phone number up there. So after today, um, please just contact us for some help. You might already be signed up and it's just been a while, um, but either way, we'll get you all squared away with that and make sure that you're comfortable with accessing the site and how to shop for the swag. Um, at the bottom, you do see a little reminder as well that every year you must use your budget within the calendar year. So the Mango Swag budget runs on a calendar year. So come December 31st, whatever dollars you have in there, they will not be rolled over. They will just go away. The new budget for 2023 will then be uploaded around like the second to third week of January. And then you'll have that budget again for that calendar year. 
So even if you only have like three or four dollars, I would still encourage you to go in there and take a peek. There are some low cost items like the buttons and there's some pens in there um, that you might be able to go ahead and get a few more things before the end of December. You've got the money in there. You might as well go ahead and use that. That being said, this does bring us to the end of our presentation. There we have all of our account manager info up on the screen. Um, so go ahead and feel free to jot that down if you are in need of con connecting with your account manager for whatever reason, um, make note of this. We will leave it up there for a minute so anybody can grab from the screen um, the information that they would need. Um, but I do wanna just thank all of you so much for joining us this morning. We really appreciate you taking the time to be able to share um, in language and culture with us here. To I see there's a question in the chat, so we'll definitely address that. And then um, any other questions that might come up. Yeah, but no, we can go ahead and verbally do it. We absolutely do have social media assets. Um, those are found in the Mango Market where Malika was just talking about. Um, and we have things that are pre-sized for Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, we've got a lot of YouTube videos, all that great stuff. Um, the best way to get into the Mango Market is to first log into the Mango Admin Portal, also known as the map, um, and then click on the Promote tab. So if you have questions about that, or if you don't have access that, um, as Malika mentioned, right here on the screen, you know, you can see all of our contact information. So just reach out to your dedicated account manager and we would be happy to get you set up. Um, but yes, we have standard things. We also update things um, for different holidays, you know, special occasions and things like that. Um, there's a lot of great social media aspects for you. Yes. And then one more thing I wanted to mention is because um, I, I know that other part of the question was, uh, do you email us monthly uh, design uh, media assets that we can use? So yes, we actually include, uh, include a lot of that stuff in our monthly newsletter. So if you don't get our monthly newsletter, send us an email to you know your your account manager um, and we will make sure that you know you're added to the list of the monthly newsletter so that way you get those uh, you know assets we do like i said we do send a monthly newsletter and anything anything new that we have or anything that is coming up um in the year that we have an um you know some of those media assets uh that you can use uh, we will include them in there with you know um, normally a little you know sentence that you can post so you can easily just download it and then post that on any social media outlets that the library might have so we do have that um yeah. and if you don't get that every month uh, let us know and we'll make sure that you get that yeah, and just a quick plug while we're talking about um, our newsletters having like our assets in it, our last newsletter highlighted that we have a new um, pirate um, piece of content in there. We have a pirate word search. So with Pirate Day coming up on September 19th, that's a great tangible piece that you guys can easily print off. Um, I know a lot of my libraries do like family event days for Pirate Day. So it's a really fun thing that you guys could have. Obviously, um, it's pretty, you know, low age level in terms of, you know, being able to just read the letters and the words. Um, so I think it will help with, you know, an activity for a lot of people to be able to engage with. Thank you, you guys. Thank really appreciate you. You being here with us. And at this point, we are going to sign off and say goodbye. We hope you guys have a beautiful day. Thank you, everyone. Libraries are the backbone of their community, supporting and empowering ambitions far beyond their doors. As we grow ever more diverse, so does the need to connect in another language. Fulfill your patrons' thirst for knowledge with a digital resource, available anytime, anywhere. Because when language is an adventure, how far will they go? Mango Languages, for your library, 